want you to eat yourself from the top of your Go down to the description box right now to hear more Malcolm, Les Martin, my man Riz featuring Conway the Machine in its entirety in the description box right now exclusively on iTunes. Don't wait. Hit the button right now. Let's go. Welcome to another episode of the Uncensored Truth Podcast. I'm your brother, Oga from Hip Hop News Uncensored. And sitting across from me is my co-host. What it do? What's good? It's your brother, Sam. And viral hip hop news. We're in a building. It's a Tuesday. You know how we roll. Another episode yeah. of the Answer the True Podcast. Oh, God, what's good, my brother? What it do? What it do? Consu in the building, man. We here today on the Uncensored Truth Podcast. Tuesday episode. Man, I'm doing great today, Sam. Man, I want to say and give a shout out to everybody that's going to be listening on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, and especially YouTube. We do appreciate each and every one of our listeners, man, from one to one million. You already know, Sam, man. So we in the building, man. Can't wait to get it in the day, on bro. Indeed, and indeed, man. We got a great episode for you today. Can't wait to get to all the topics as well as the boss talk with brother Khan Su, mm -hmm. like we got on the line, like old guy said, man. But we had a great episode yesterday. Dropped yeah. it on YouTube, man. It's getting a lot of reviews. People mad at me, man. I'm not gonna lie. For everyone out there that got some smoke <laughs> right now regarding the title of the video in regards to Young Mind Kodak Black, and me telling people to go over to the iTunes, Spotify. I got people pissed off. That was me. Y'all could bring that smoke over here, <laughs> but. It's doing great numbers. We do appreciate everyone going over to iTunes, Spotify, and Google Play to listen to the content. You must understand that sometimes we cannot put all the raw episode of the podcast the way we like to give it to you on YouTube nah. for various reasons. Politics, That's why we man. put it over there for iTunes, Spotify, Google Play. If you don't know how to do that, if you got an iPhone, uh, fucking uh, one of those other phones, Android. Androids, <laughs> whatever you got a Spotify app or uh, iTunes app, yeah, uh, I, uh, what is that? The podcast app, excuse yeah. me. Do that yeah. joint, it's free. Yeah, but look us up. We're on all the platforms, all the shit's free of charge, man. Go look us up. It's not hard to do. I'm trying to get these numbers right, man. We businessmen, yeah, no doubt, man. And I'm um, like, I said, it's a little, all you gotta do is kind of, you know, I mean. I got an episode right there, so let them know. Right on your phone, the little um app on your phone, you can download the podcast real easily. And um, you know, we appreciate it, but we want to um, you know, inculcate a new portion of um the podcast. We want to reach the people, and we want to jump over here and start. We got a, like quite a lineup today, not not real huge, but we're going to talk about um Wendy Williams today. You know, her making some um real pertinent announcement. Also, Terry Crews, you know, is gearing up to do another movie. We're gonna have a little bit of fun. With that, also speaking of Dame Dash, Dame Dash is now in the middle of um, a lawsuit. And, um, you know, yeah, we're going to talk about a few other things, man. I'm glad we got the podcast started off, you know, like that today because, um, once again, it's to jump back into that, man. I mean, um, it's great to have these type of guys, like-minded, you know, people who go through like-minded, situ you know, um, situations. It's just great because you can't talk to everybody. Your CEOs, it's hard to kind of have that conversation like a worker and no disrespect to people who work, but they won't resonate with that kind of type of conversation because it's just not nothing they ever experienced. It's a mindset and it, it's uh, it's not often explained. You just have to understand among mindsets. And it takes a crazy motherfucker to go out here and start uh, your own business to fail the amount of times that you're going to have to fail to have to hear the naysayers in today's age, the way you're going to have to hear them and to jump out of that and succeed. It's not a very easy thing to do. And you begin to separate yourself from people that you was once often mm -hmm. found close to you because you got, you understand that around that mindset, God bless their hearts. They're certain they're used to being in a certain box to be in a certain way. And they just won't understand any other way. And then you happen to find people that do understand you and those are the motherfuckers you just instantly gravitate to. Mm -hmm. And then you see success. You are the people, you are the company you keep. We hear the term. It's so simply said, but it's so very true and so powerful. The people that you are around are you. Yeah. And you got to really look at your circle and say, damn, well, we doing the same thing we were doing last year. How can we change that? If you ain't thinking about that, move your circle because that's what you need to do. You need to try to evolve. And when you do find somebody like that in your circle, don't have ego don't right. don't let ego run you and, and think that you can't learn something humble yourself and, and kind of jump on a wave man because you might have something beautiful come out of it yeah man i think you know what also you know stood out was like what Kansu talked about um the empowerment but like the leeching and you talked about you know having to separate yourself from certain people that you may love obviously still mm -hmm. but it's just like a point in your life where the best analogy that i can give is like we got to swim but I can't continue to hold you up. At, at a point, you're a grown man. 
you got all the tools. You got to swim by yourself. I can try to hold you a little bit, but at a point in time, we, you're going to take us both down. You know what I mean? So it's just like sometimes you got to separate yourself. It's all love. Mm -hmm. You still love people, but you're going to a different height, a different stratosphere. And if they don't get off your coattail, you won't make it there. And exactly. It's sad. And, 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 you know, you're talking about legacy, family. Everything is on the line here. This ain't just somebody trying to make a couple of dollars. Nah, you're trying to build some wealth. For your family, 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 generational wealth. You know what I mean? So it's a lot of at stake here. It's a, it's everything's at stake. <laughs> and you can't let naysayers bother you. You can't let people stop you. Not everyone's gonna like your product. Not everyone's gonna agree with what you're doing. Yes, and they're gonna be way louder than the people that support you because that's how it is. It just is what it is. Mm -hmm. You can't let that stop you. You can't let anything fucking stop you. you gotta get your shovel and you gotta dig. Like Hansu said, he fell to rock bottom on numerous occasions. He fought fell to rock bottom at a place where we want to sit there and be enjoying our lives and enjoying the fruits of our labor at 40 years old. Yeah. That's where he fell at rock bottom and had to get his way out. So if you could do it at that age, it doesn't matter. Just fucking get your shovel and find your way out, man. That's yeah. it. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So yeah, man, tune into the Unset the Truth podcast. You already know how we do over here. I just want to give a special shout out to the people listening on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, wherever you're listening to this podcast. We do appreciate it if you never hear it. Oh, again, no, Sam, man, Terry Crews. Man, let's have some fun with this situation real quick, man. Well, we, well, we when the last time we talked about Terry Crews? Last week we talked about him because he issued the apology to black men. I got a great response yeah, from the yeah. Instant Truth podcast. Talked about Terry and whether or not he should be forgiven and just him finding out that hey, he should have punched homeboy in his face and, and put his manhood. Well, we all know about the White Chicks movie. Heard about that. Watched that back in the 2000s mm -hmm. with Marlon and Sean Wayans. Our man uh, Terry Crews was in that movie. He was asked if he would like to do another one. He said, I would love to. I would love another one. I'm staying in shape for white chicks, too. I will never get out of shape. No, that's right. I will be 75 and say, here we go. I'm ready to go. I will never, ever get out of shape because that movie is going to happen. Now, he is very, very excited about this going on. The co-stars are beginning to reunite. Oh, God. What are your thoughts on Terry Crews being overly <sighs> excited? about white chicks too uh i think it's just man just you know it's soft i think it's just what's, what's the word i'm looking for i just th i think you know it's just a bad representation of black manhood i just think it is to um we talked about it in pre-production about the wayans and you talked about them not really even being you know like that and my thing if you're not like that why do that just just for the dollar because that's the only reason you can say i mean it's nothing educational about doing that i don't know i'm just you know me personally people may call me biased they may call me whatever i'm just against certain situations and not let alone being a white woman but being a man dressing as a woman i'm vehemently against that you know what i mean whether it be a movie whether it be acting whether it be for whatever i'm just against it you look at the history you know the people who have done it jamie fox you know martin um eddie the list murphy. goes on eddie murphy and we can go all the way down the list and then we have even you know um dave Chappelle, who had the video i think he was on oprah and he was talking about you know um they wanted him to put it on and he just you know it was just a line he wasn't willing to cross and we just got finished talking with khan too about we'll walk away from opportunities you know if it compromised our manhood now i couldn't live and not that it's even about anybody else but your son seeing your kids seeing you in a dress it's just about me doing it as a man like why that it's something else it's got to be something else that i could do and the fact that terry cruz the man that let the guy grab his you know uh vaginal not vaginal but his crotch mm -hmm. you know uh, uh in front of his woman who didn't do anything sitting up here just willing to be a woman again so he wasn't a woman in that but he was well okay trying to, trying to fuck a man that was a woman okay well that's better all right. Okay. I mean, well, anyway, so for him, him, you know, him, you know, um, being excited about the role in the movie to clarify mm -hmm. that, I think it's just sad, man. I, I don't know. I'm just, you know, I'm just, just. Oh God, I, I agree with you to a certain degree, but let me play devil's advocate for a little oh, bit because shit. even growing up, and a lot of people are going to say it, and it's it's a good conversation to have because I agree with you when it comes to the dresses, but I also have to sit back and, and admit that when Nutty Professor came out, that shit was funny as hell. When Shanene was on, that excuse went it. on Martin. Now I'm not saying it excuses it, but All I'm right. just saying that I laughed at the shit. <laughs> <laughs> so is it is it a difference between art and a real significance? Like, is it a difference between a Martin doing a Shanene or a Jamie Foxx doing a Wanda than it is them asking you to put on a dress because they're creating a character? In your opinion, I'm, I'm just asking. Uh, no, I'm not saying it's no, no different. I think either way, you know what I'm saying? Um, it's emasculating. You know, whether they want to do you know what I mean, you could say like, okay, they did it. Mm. To me, I think, you know, they lose a certain amount of respect. 
you know, for that, especially what just with our history and the type of things that we had to endure and go through in this country and the type of progress that we made for them to, um, you know, do that. Because a lot of people will point to a whole agenda, you know, being behind this. And then, you know, you'll hear the people say, well, you know, um, you have your white, you know, um, your people who've done it too, like your Robin Williams and the other people. Yeah, but, yeah, I was gonna say that, yeah. yeah, but but still, but still, you look at it though, but you never see like their, their, you know, um, their Tom Cruises and, and, and you know, those type of people that go to that level. They want to put all our dudes in dresses, our, our Terry Cruises, you know what I mean? All our men got to put, name one that didn't, two probably that didn't, everybody else did. What I will say is this, there, there's no comparison. Even even if they do like your Robin Williams of the world, or even if you right. did find a Tom Cruise, that wouldn't be their claim to fame. Where you see a Martin and, and his biggest movies outside of the Bad Boys was what, Big Mama's House. In, in, yeah. in that kind of shit when you look at um jamie fox i'm sure not nah, biggest movies probably was in an ali and things like that but one of his biggest characters was wanda from the living color martin shanane right. I, I just said martin with shanane and oh, you yeah. start thinking about <laughs> right. all, all the other characters and their their claim to fame was was these iconic female characters it gets bothersome especially gets bothersome to the heterosexual male that's supposed to be prideful in in who he is and i just i if i was ever involved in a movie and i've done my my share of script readings and things like that i would never feel comfortable in playing a woman role like you couldn't put me in character of being a woman like now fuck that I, I don't i'd rather not do that there's certain roles that i know that i'll be like all right cool i can get into this and certain ones i would read and go nah that shit ain't for me and i mean we all would had a choice for a bag though like if it was like all right just use this 50 milli this is 30 milli you just got to put it on and you know for one scene and would you compromise would you would you be able to rationalize that to you or is it or is it what's, what's, what's the reason why i should ask you why why you wouldn't put on the dress because some people say shit man he's paying me 30 40 million i got a son mm. i got a son and i and i got a great story because back in 2011 2012 i was in la and i was on my ass and I was putting in for everything. I had it was my model. I was putting in my dimension, everything that I needed just to try to get gigs. And I will give plenty of callbacks for some shit that I just wasn't got compromising myself for mm -hmm. because I had a son 3000 miles away that happened to be young at that age, but had to grow up. And I started seeing already we were in the day and age with that shit right there. If I got into it, would have never left me. <laughs> I can't yeah, do that. man. Yeah couldn't do that i'm not gonna oh, compromise no. myself in certain situations no matter what bag there's other ways like brother Kansu said to to do what you love and create a bag without compromising your manhood and who Facts. you are and, and that's it, the main thing and that's the main thing and i'm not yeah. saying that Mar if martin wanted to do that and that was him cool if it i don't have a problem with it it's just certain like there's no money or dollar amount that could put me into a situation where i could compromise my my morals and my values would you make would you say that that these men are any less of a man when they do that like when guys like martin jamie fox you know um what message is that sending, you know, to the children? Do you think that they're less of a man when they do that? I don't think, and we talked about this before. It was a great conversation. I don't think that it sends any weird message to a kid, but I, I, cause I honestly felt like when we watched it, as funny as it was, it was weird as hell to realize once we realized that these powerful characters that we watching were actually men. When we realized and registered in our head that Jamie mm -hmm. Foxx was a wonder, when we realized that Martin was actually Shanae, we kind of just like, oh shit, like it was kind of weird, but we went along with it. But it never steered our minds into a direction where we thought that that was normal. It was never normalized right. in our head. Right. So any child that, that 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 looks at that, I don't think that they would be swayed in the direction of whether or not these guys. Um, should still be justified and and still should be looked at with a level of respect. I, I think that they should. Absolutely. I'm not going to be a hypocrite and say that I still won't watch Martin in a movie, Jamie yeah, Foxx yeah, in a movie, yeah. or any of them in a movie right. and not enjoy myself or or think in the back of my head, nah, fuck Jamie Foxx, he was Wanda or fuck Martin. I'm not thinking like that. But I do have to mm -hmm. give criticism when we have conversations. I kind of just up. don't want to see it again. Like I kind of just don't want to see, you know, all right, the past happened. These guys got criticism for that. I don't want to see Kevin Hart ever doing it again. Mm -hmm. I don't want to see Eddie. If I see him guys, you know, jumping in dresses again, my like, art, right, let it just be a thing of the past. They made a mistake. And, you know, we can kind of just clear that up. Obviously, people look at him, how they're going to look at him. But I don't, again, I, I just don't, if, if we see it continuously, like new actors, like my man that played in the Panthers and these guys, you know, um, that are up and coming, if they have to start, you know, having these roles and wearing dresses and stuff, then we will see that is definitely a pattern. I think we can point to a pattern now, but if it continues, I think it should stop now. I think I don't think no more black men should take these roles and wear dresses. That was a no great more. question. I was gonna say, do you see? Do you start seeing the prominent black actors coming in the rise right now? Do you start seeing them taking on these roles like we've seen in the '90s and early 2000s? Do you see that kind of behavior continuing now, mm -hmm. given the climax and conversation we have today? 
Right. What do you think that would do to a career like that? Because when there there wasn't no Twitter when when Big Mama's house came out or, or when yeah, there yeah. was Martin and shit like that. If you yeah. if you've seen Black Panther or imagine looking at Umbaku in a motherfucking dress. That ain't happening. That's what I'm saying. It's like who it could have two different effects, you know. Um, because now you have when again, we talk about the sensitivity now, mm. you know, of the media, it can it can have a back backfiring effect that people go to when let's say if somebody did want to wear and express themselves and wear a skirt or a dress or, or a dress as a woman, the backlash they you know, it could be people can get criticized for that. But again, I just think that, you know, um, we should be to a level now where we not really, you know, um with the consciousness out here now, what people know and what we see in America. Any black man should stoop down to the level to put on a dress after seeing what's going on in this country right now is a disgrace. A little bit. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, I would hate to offend people, but yeah. shit, let's just look at it for what it is and how they try to demasculate already. And if you don't think that that's an agenda, I mean, just look. Yeah, I mean, you know, it is what it is, man. This is podcast material, uncensored truth. Mm -hmm. You already know how we do it over here but you tuned into the uncensored truth podcast with your brother old god and sam man we going in today on this tuesday i want to talk about dame dash now dame dash right now is in the middle of a seven million dollar lawsuit now according to the blast they're saying that dame dash once again is facing a seven million dollar lawsuit from filmmaker josh weber who pretty much said that they started you know, um, on a film together now. Weber is saying that he lost six million dollar investment after Dame Dash made some controversial comments online, directly causing an unnamed partner to step out of, you know, um, the deal. Pretty much now, Dame Dash, um, obviously went on, you know, um, a tirade online and pretty much um accused this guy of being a culture vulture and whatnot, and um, you know, whatever. I mean, it just is what it is. They got to go to court. Um, deal with this situation. Um, what do you think about this, man? Dame Dash could be absolutely one hundred percent right in his gripe and his in his beef with this situation. But my biggest question to Dame Dash would be: Why does he continue you twenty years after dealing with the main culture vulture, the one you realize with the culture vulture all the way around? Why do you continue to find culture vultures? Because any post that you put up, although inspirational, it's led with a bit of defense. Mm -hmm. It's led with a bit of bravado. It's led with a bit of I'm still pointing my finger at the people that are doing me wrong. Now, we all heard the apology, and, and from then on out, it seems like the defense has been turned up to a million. And now you continue to coin the term culture vulture, but fail to acknowledge the very man that helped you create the culture of the whole culture vulture theme. And that's yeah. very bothersome to a lot of real motherfuckers out here that watched you and, and watched that blossom and grow. But we're going to have that brother on here, Kenyatta Griggs. Right. So we had to talk about that a little deeper, so we'll get into that. But... In regards to the lawsuit, like I said, just find it very odd that Mr. Dash keeps finding himself in situations where he continued to do, to do deals with quote unquote culture vultures when he's supposed to be so deep into finding these independent, up and coming, culture related entrepreneurs and artists within the within the confines of his content. But he's always finding somebody else. I don't get it. Yeah, yeah. It's just one of those situations, man, I guess. Um, obviously Dame Dash is defending, you know, himself once again online. But yeah, that, that's a good point you bring up, man. Like, why do you keep coming if you're so keen of this? If you you know, you you spot a coach of orders from 10 miles away, why do you keep ending up in these deals with these guys? Every single one. Right. And why why you keep going to court and then out of court? Now we understand that, you know, business, you're gonna be in and out of court sometimes, but it just some things just you know kind of rub me the wrong way at this point, man. Obviously, we still support, we love Dame Dash, but it's one of those situations that we'll see how it just plays out. I hope it's one of those things where it'll kind of just you know blow over. But that's a lot of money, you know, for somebody to be taking you to court, you know, uh, six seven million dollars when you're what is work. it? What is it? Defamation? Oh uh, yeah, defamation. Yeah. So with yeah. the tirades that he's throwing out online, what what does the defamation of character stem from? Do you know? Yeah. Hold on one second. Okay. Hold on. Because it just seems. I mean, for seven million dollars, like you said, that's a lot of money. And if it's right. him throwing his name under the bus and things like that, I mean, isn't that what Dane's doing now? Not court, to be it says uh, court document detail. Weber is alleging that Dash's um, following illustrates the defamation damages. The plaintiff believes he is old. It says as Dash has five hundred thirty-five thousand Instagram uh, followers, in addition, thirty thousand YouTube subscribers. The number reflects one per Dane Dash's audience online. It says Weber further. Claimed that he lost six million dollar investment that the unnamed partner um explicitly cited the dame's comments as for reasons of him pulling out the contract so i guess him saying stuff online 
you know, um, saying different things that uh, put it, you know, this in jeopardy. And he's claiming that this is the reason why they walked off on the deal and he lost his investment. I don't know how successful he's going to be with this, but that kind of just is what it is. Yeah, I mean, it's very, very corny to do that, to jump online and do that. But it, I mean, and on, right. on Weber's part, to sue for seven million dollars because you're going to claim that he clowned you on Instagram. Right. And now all of a sudden you lost a six million dollar deal because of an Instagram post. I don't know any real business person that's going to lose that because of IG. I see a lot of people getting incriminated, incriminating themselves when they right. throw guns and shit. But right. a simple post, I mean, that's kind of petty. But nonetheless, yeah. why does Dame Dash keep dealing with these people, man? I don't, I don't know. Yeah, man, you know, it kind of is what it is with that. You know what I'm saying? Can't wait yeah. to get some more information, man, because we're going to have Kenyatta Griggs, yeah. the author of the Culture Vultures book, as well as Think and Ball Out, Secret to Ball in the series, exceptional series, man. Can't wait to have him on. We haven't had him on in a while. we got a lot to talk about, as you guys could imagine. Yeah. That should be Thursday or Friday. We have a number of other great interviews. Ogata and I were talking just to give a little bit of dialogue throughout segments about a publicist, man, because we're about at that time, the Institute yeah, yeah. Podcast. When we really need a publicist. We're looking out there. If you're sitting there watching right now throughout the commentary, the Uncensored Shoe Podcast, we're looking. So if you know anybody, if you are if you are one yourself, please drop a resume in any of the emails. It'd be at ogod at hiphopun.com or myself, Sam Ant at dlsmediainc1 mm -hmm. at gmail.com. You can hit either one of us up and we'll definitely get the information to each other because we need one ASAP, man. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. So definitely hit those emails up if you know somebody or if you're one, you know, um, yourself. Now, Wendy Williams, you know, pretty much is back in the news. And we talked about her, you know, um, a few weeks ago, I think it was, you know, her talking about her overcoming her drug addiction. Well, she, you know, pretty much left a statement and said, um, and I quote, I've been living in a sober house. You know, I've had a struggle with cocaine in the past. I've never went to a place to get treatment. There are people in your family and it might be you. I want you to know more, you know, of the story. I guess she did this um, on her show, you know, today. And she's pretty much, you know, claiming that now she's sober and she's overcame, you know, um, this. Now, we this is something that's been commonly known. I guess people kind of joked about this, but we kind of took, you know, um, you know, a different approach and, you know, pretty much sympathized with her and said, look, that you're a champion for being able to overcome, you know, because they had a whole era, the crack era. You know what people didn't even know about that people didn't make it you know what i mean so you know i think that she should be proud of where she came from and obviously i mean um her sharing this i know for a fact is going to help other people we know how that that effect works she she lives on tv and right. she gets a lot of a lot of criticism because she's very old into a lot of other people's business and and those that are on the air people obviously for good reason get pissed pissed off about that but one thing you got to respect about that woman is she lives her life on there too. It's something she keeps private. And if they happen to come out, she acknowledges it. Mm -hmm. And she's never afraid to acknowledge her own fault. She was on her show and and what you read, they have a clip of it and her emotion just it was spewed all in it. You could tell that it was something that really got to her that she's living in this house and she's still dealing with addiction. And uh, even at the height of your fame and everything's supposed to be great, you never know what's going on when the curtains are closed or what's behind closed doors. Yeah. For her to be living that right now outright in front of everybody, as much as you may think about Wendy Williams. And if she talked about us, we'd be talking shit about equal <laughs> body back to her. But right. you got to acknowledge and, and respect somebody's strength to be able to go out there and and deal with the darknesses they have in their closet out here in the light from everybody to see man and deal with the criticism and yeah. all that man salute to that for real yeah it takes a brave 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 person hell yeah so yeah salute to uh wendy definitely um you know for that but yeah man i'm um, another episode you know um of the uh unset the true podcast you know in the books we were talking about um mike trout we guess we talked about that you know briefly pretty much him signing um i think the biggest deal in baseball history now we were talking about mike you know, you were telling me that he might be coming to the Phillies. Obviously, is that's probably not going to happen, not you know, right now. But um, the details of the deals he signed um a four hundred and thirty million dollar twelve year extension with the Angels, the biggest deal in history. Sam, man, what's, what's your thoughts on that? God damn, I wish my son played baseball, man, because. Right. Baseball's giving some lucrative deals. Damn near half a billion dollars. Salute to Mike Trout. He's a Millville Bull, South Jersey Bull. Yeah. So obviously we have a connection with the South Jersey connection. So salute to you. A lot of people out here in this area were obviously really excited on, on the hopes of you coming out here with Bryce Harper now and playing mm -hmm. for the Phillies and playing for your hometown team. Something that you've always expressed for playing for to be able to play for the Phillies. But mm -hmm. hell, you think about Philly in, in December when it's cold as hell yeah, or L.A. Right. Right. And chilling. So, I mean, 
biggest deal ever in baseball history. He'll be able to have cribs in both places. That's a guaranteed contract. He's looking at probably about $36 million a year, $223,000 a baseball game guaranteed for 12 years. I mean, life could be worse. Yeah, that's a, a you know, um, a great, great deal. You know what I mean? Right there. Shout out to him. You know, for getting that deal, man. I like it to see stuff like this because it just raises the bar for somebody else to break that. Yeah. Just like you talk about, like everybody's talking about football, and we could talk about this to uh Landry, who just came, um, y'all just signed him from the Giants, you know, um, is wanting to wear, wanting to wear the 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 man, the man, the deceased, you know, uh Sean Taylor, as you see him right there on the table, you know, jersey, and it's been a controversy going back and forth because he wore 21 with the Giants. Sam, man, I know you, you know, intimately, you know, um, definitely a Redskins fan, definitely Sean Taylor fan. How do you feel about Landry wanting to uh, wear that number? It's it's a disgrace. And I'm going to tell you why. Even if and, and he was supposed to be a, 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 a diehard fan of him. The reason why he has number 21 in on for the Giants was in, um, in memory mm -hmm, of mm -hmm. Sean Taylor. You can't do that. That man is gone. The number 23 will never able be able to don the Chicago Bulls jersey again. There's certain numbers that a number 20 will never be able to put on a Detroit Lions jersey ever again. That's yeah. Barry's. Mm -hmm. there, there's certain numbers that will not ever be able to be touched. And for you to sit there and, and even as a fan, even try to do that is, is very disrespectful. You can't do that in memory. Why don't you put on number 26 his jersey in college? Why don't you commemorate him like that? Mm -hmm. You're not going to go to the team. You'll never live up to that. Mm -hmm. For you to put that jersey on, you'll never, ever live up to yeah. Sean Taylor. It's yeah. not going to happen, man. So I, I wouldn't even yeah. do that to yourself. It's very ignorant for you to say I'd apologize immediately, put the fucking 26 on and keep it moving. Yeah, I mean, you know, definitely, man. I think it was one of those jerseys that got to stay up there in the rafters, man. That, that's Hall of Fame. Nobody else should wear that jersey. A legendary player. Sadly, you know, miss a, a, a unfortunate situation that happened down there. I think it was Florida, mm -hmm. you know, where it happened. So, yeah, man, definitely not, man. You tripping Landry for that one, man. You're I tripping. mean, and, and Clinton Portis, which was another one of my favorite players for the Redskins, his number was 26, but I, I'd accept that more than 21. 21 will never, ever be one right. again. That's in the Raptors. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And there's no reason, and you, you can't justify that. Hell no. No doubt, man. But yeah, man. So, yeah, man, another episode of the Unset the Truth podcast with your brother, old guy, is in the books. We won't talk about this briefly, but, you know, if you didn't hear, you know, Jay Prince posted up a picture today with um a few people, you know, namely French Montana, and I guess they allegedly, well, not allegedly now, pretty much have gotten YBN Almighty's chain back um what do you, what's your thoughts on that just briefly you know him you know working his politics word the chain back good for him <laughs> would love for him to come on a podcast and speak on it we'll love to, to talk about a lot of different things <laughs> right seems to be out on social media now hearing a lot of different things if you happen to check it out happen to see the podcast watch the content watch the content that we had on you mm -hmm. we'll love to have a conversation with you brother and and just and just and dig into it whether you agreed with what we said whether you disagreed we'd love to have a respectful conversation and just talk about a lot of business con business talking and, yeah, and beyond yeah. man it'll be great yeah. that's what we need that publicist so if you know any publicist or you want want to you know we're looking to hire one you know right now my email is oh god at hiphopun.com you know or sam man you know i think it's dls1 media a uh, dls media inc okay. one DLS okay. Media Inc. The number one at gmail.com. Yeah, yeah. P please get in touch with us if you know somebody, if you're one ASAP. We're ready to get rolling with that publicist. But that being said, man, another episode, you know, is in the books. We'll be back, you know, um, Thursday. If you're listening to this Wednesday morning, you know, um, or wherever you're listening to this, we want to say we do appreciate it. And if you can, just share this podcast with just one other person if you can. Indeed, man. Appreciate each and every one of y'all. We got an yeah. off day tomorrow, but you can catch us Thursday evening. We should have Kenyatta Griggs. If not, we're going to have him Friday. If not, we're going to be live doing what the fuck we do. Yeah. You never know what's going to happen out here with these people, but we're going to keep it rocking on the Uncensored True Podcast. Thank you for listening on iTunes, Spotify, yeah. Google Play, and all major online outlets. And of course, appreciate each and every one of y'all that watch us on YouTube, whether you watch on Viral Hip Hop News, Hip Hop News Uncensored, or the Uncensored True Podcast official channel. And let me say something real quick and getting out of here. Now, the way we got this set up, because we got a three-headed monster, we segment out most of the content. Now, you can <laughs> check that out on Hip Hop News Uncensored. Overall, Hip Hop News, we give it to you in its entirety on the Uncensored True Podcast. If, in fact, we don't have something that we talk about because it's too raw or uncut on YouTube, you can find that on iTunes, Spotify, or Google Play. 
very easy on Android phones, iPhones. There's a, um, a podcast app that you can go ahead and grab the podcast from, or you can download Spotify absolutely for free. It costs no money. Had some people pissed off with me on the last podcast, man, because no, I man. cut one of our conversations that I put the title a little short okay. to tell them to go over there trying to use some marketing because we're ceos and we do our own business yeah, and for the most true. part i mean they appreciated it but some people were very and highly pissed off but yeah just to trying to help y'all out man it's we appreciate saying that each goes and every say, one of you wanna, uh, please everybody sell ice cream <laughs> i don't even eat ice cream so you can't you can't please everybody now <laughs> vegan ice cream <laughs> i fuck that up what that at? they need that on the bowl yeah right asap definitely babe another oh, episode you know, inculcate a new portion of um the podcast you want to reach the people and we want to bring, you know, um, a good friend of ours, man, that works a lot behind the scenes. A lot of people don't see him, but his brother Kansu, you know, um, and he's he's doing a lot, really, but really low key with mm -hmm. it. But we always gotta, you know, gotta bring him out in front of the people so he can show his expertise. So we want to just let me talk business a little bit. You know what I mean? Today, um, it's tax season right now. Um, a lot of people are getting income tax and whatnot, um, and a lot of things going on in the media. So I'm excited to have a brother in the building anytime he steps in his hand, man. Very exciting. Anytime we have him on, anytime we, we have a conversation, why don't we learn something new, which is something you always want to have out of a conversation. So we always love to have him on. We've been talking about this for a long time, just to add this portion, especially for the people that listen to us on iTunes and Spotify, just to give y'all a little bit more uh, the meat potatoes of the institute podcast give you a little more to listen to and enjoy so i'm not gonna hold you up without further ado brother khan Su, the floor is yours man man what's up everybody man love life prosperity you know man that's what it's all about tell me about him on brother if you can <clears throat> yeah can you guys hear me i want to make sure you guys hear me. we can't hear you brother khan so you have to hit the volume button i'll turn your oh, mute okay. off excuse me can you guys hear me mute Oh, wait. Yeah, we can't. Maybe uh, you, you guys mute, hear me? you might have to drop off or come back in the yeah. podcast. We can't hear you. Yeah, there you go. Drop off, come back in. But yeah, man. Okay, you well. guys console, you know, queued up about to come back in here, having a little bit of technical difficulties, man. But it is income tax season. Yeah, definitely. You know what I mean? A lot of people are getting their income tax. And you know, we just want to speak because everybody's not a baller. Everybody don't got a whole bunch of money. So you want to be able to, you know, use your money wisely. So I just want to, you know, talk to this brother, you know, um, about that as well as some other things as far as you know investments and you know how to kind of just even set up because i was actually looking today and I, um you know it's like matco one of the tool companies and I, I looked on the side of this um of his work truck and it said like something tools llc so i'm like all right this dude right here he got the pitch even though he works you know sells this company matco's tools he set up the llc so he's already on to and knowing what, what he has to do but i'm kind of back on here nice nice so i'm gonna I'm uh, turn the microphone back over to the brother for his introduction yo yo can you guys hear me can you guys hear me yes yeah, so you good now <laughs> okay cool cool yeah man peace power and prosperity to everybody man it's always a pleasure to chop it up with the kings man it's always a good thing you know uh you know positive vibes and it's all about you know prosperity man getting this money and being responsible with it man so it's all good dope man well, it was great to have you on brother khan too for the people who are just kind of getting an introduction of who you are for the new listeners on itunes spotify anybody listening on the audio version give them a little bit of your resume who you are a little bit of your background and your expertise and and what we're basically about to get in this nice conversation about that yeah, you know, I've been involved in financial consulting now for the past 10 years. Um, I've been in contract law and negotiations for the past 20 years. And um, I have a background as a financier. So not only do I operate in the capacity of being a financial advisor, I also know how to fund business startups and how to set up business infrastructure. So I'm uh, really, you know, I enjoy it, man. It's fun to take a project from its, you know, inception as an idea and actually see it come to life and actually become, you know, profitable. It's really an exciting thing. It's almost like, you know, creating a life or something. It's really, it's yeah. really fun, you know. So that's what I've been doing. And, you know, it, I've been very successful at it quietly, like I like it. <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, I just, I just been real fortunate, man. I had some really good mentors and i failed early and often mm -hmm. and i always say that's the best teacher my failures were lessons and it really helped me especially early on in my development 
Absolutely, absolutely, definitely. So what would be like the first step, man? Just you know, let's just say, um, I know you have a son, or, you know, or two. How how did how did you you know you know your son coming out of you know grade school going into high school? Just preparing them to be an adult. What type of advice would you give to just somebody who look who's looking you know just to know that they're going to have start to have credit cards and bills and things that they're going to have to be financially responsible? What type of advice you know would you give them to uh you know things to do just coming out? Let's say somebody eighteen going into uh, college. Yeah. Well, as a parent. What I had to figure out in the hard way, because initially I would say I wasn't really the best father, man. The first few years, um, because, you know, my father, God rest his soul, you know, he didn't have the tools. He taught me the best he could. And I had to find out that this was a, a lineage thing. This was something, a cycle I had to break. So when my children came of age, the first thing I did was prove to them I was a father. And I had to show them what the requirements of being a father is, not just a parent. There's a difference. There's a subtle difference in just being a provider and provi being provisionary versus influencing and leading your children on how to make the right choices in life. So what I did is I promoted the creativity in my children. I never tried to force them in a direction. Whatever they were good at, I reinforced it. And I, I allowed them to make choices and I gave them the room to fail because the, when, in failure is when you start asking questions and you start reflecting on things. And it was easier to relate to my children when they didn't meet their own expectations versus me parenting them and trying to boss them and things of that nature to let them know that I can rationalize and I appreciate their opinion. And we developed a bond which allowed them to mature. All of my children are adults now. We have a really great relationship because they're able to talk to me man to man. Even though I'm dad, they're not allowed to call me by my first name. <laughs> but <laughs> we I'm dad, but they respect me and I respect them as me. So we got a really great relationship. Man. Yeah. Dope. Um, so you started your businesses up. We got Aboriginal Consulting. You said you've been a financial advisor for 10 years and then you've done yeah. um, law for over 20 years. Talk about the breaking into those businesses, gaining clientele and, and, the, and the hurdles you had to go through to be able to do that. Just to kind of give a, a, a someone that's trying to start the business a little bit of an idea of some hurdles and obstacles they may be going through along their journey and getting to successful business. Yeah, you know what? I didn't have a clue, Sam. I didn't really have an idea of where I fit in, I kind of failed my way in because I was working for a labor union. It was SEIU Local 1 in Illinois. Shout out to FBJ32 in New York. Um, I used to work between there and here for the cleaning staff and security officers in the metropolitan area. So I represented those officers and cleaning staff members. And I, I was taught organizing. I learned how to organize. I learned how to oratize and speak publicly and stuff like that. So I didn't know at the time that my destiny was being built for me. I started building and learning and getting skills from a business that I was already working in that would accentuate my skill points. Because you know how you can have ability and it's only going to take you so far, but your knowledge and your skill is unlimited. And if you hone in on your knowledge and skill, even when your abilities to fail, your, your potential is limitless because knowledge never stops. Skill level never stops. Skill is nothing but practice. Knowledge is nothing but research. And the more knowledgeable and skillful you are, you'll go above and beyond your abilities. Me, you know, me and oh God, we were talking about this earlier in another broadcast. I use the person as an analogy, Steve Kerr. If I took Steve Kerr, and I put him against LeBron James or Steph Curry, it would be a joke, right? But Steve Kerr was an NBA player, one of the greatest players in the world, right? But Steve Kerr, how many rings does he have? You see what I'm saying? Because he went above and beyond his ability because he enhanced his skill and his knowledge of the game of basketball. And he expanded outside of being just a player. So when I went through my challenges, what helped me is I was fired. I got fired at four years old. Okay, I'm 48 now. So I got fired at 40. I was already running my small business on the side 
as a consultant. Um, I was doing contract work for business, you know, independent business people. I would draft up their contracts and stuff like that. I would do small real estate deals, assignment contracts for real estate transactions. So I was I was cultivating my craft. And when I got fired, I hit rock bottom because I was 40 years old and I was doing this for 19 years. And I said, man, what am I gonna do? You know what? You know, I'm a 40 year old black man. What kind of skill sets do I have? I come from the west side of Chicago. So I got a lot of things going against me. Psychologically, I'm trying to try not to be, um, you know, self-loathing. So what I did is I created my lane. I started looking at my skill sets. I wrote down what I was grateful for. That's the first thing I did. I wrote down, listen to Robert Kiyosaki, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I'll never forget. I ordered two things with my, my last check. I ordered Carlton Sheets real estate program, and I ordered Robert Kiyosaki, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And Robert Kiyosaki had said, write down what you're grateful for. And I did. And when I looked at the list, what is what shouted? And then he said, when you're done writing down what you're grateful for, write down how you acquired what you're grateful for. And when I realized I acquired what I was grateful for because I could not stand poverty, I hated being poor. And and I, I said, no, and you know what? My parents did whatever they did so that we could just, just live average. Because, you know, for us growing up, being able to eat every night, you thought you was wealthy. Yeah. Because you go through them periods, man. The gas not on. Yeah. You know, mom and dad in a bad mood. They take it out on you. You know, the family structures really shook up. So when I became an adult, I lost my parents at a young age. I lost both my parents three months apart from each other in the same year in 1988. That was a year of crack. So it was really hard for me to not get involved in that. But I did get involved in the streets. And when I started going in and taking that street mentality to the corporate world, it really benefited me. Because when I was fired, when I got fired, I had to be very resourceful. And that me being fired opened up the doors for other avenues. And I started creating my own skill. And my skill led to my knowledge level. I started getting more advanced in understanding finance, understanding financiering, understanding the laws behind it. And before you know it, man, I had an epiphany. I said Aboriginal consultant. I called it Aboriginal because it was my first thought to move forward. So it was Aboriginal in my movement. And that's and I just stood by it, man. I didn't quit. You know, I had nights. I, you know, since I was 40 years old, I've been homeless twice. I slept <clears> in my car. I had showers and gas stations. My friends left me. My girls, my 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 my, my lady friends left me. I was ridiculed. I was talked about. But and it happened to me twice. One of my business partners took over six figures out of my account, stole the money, never found them again. So I've been, you know, I failed my way to success, Sam. And it's going to take you hitting rock bottom for those of you out there listening. Once you don't have an option, you're going to really see who you made up. Because yeah. we, we, we are convenient. We get a lot of things that sometimes hold us back. So don't think that when you have certain obstacles that get in your way, that's just your spirituality guiding you in the proper direction. When one door closes, I promise you, if you're crazy enough to believe in yourself, it's going to happen. <laughs> Just hang in there. You got to trust yeah. the process, not the narrative. You, nobody's going to like you. Nobody's going to be around you. That's not the point. You got to be obsessed with your with your skill, with your, with your um, accomplishments. You got to have it like, a, you know, um, C.T. Fletcher had, said, had a video. He said his magnificent obsession. You got you to want this more than anything else, man. And that's really what did it. It's no magic pill. <laughs> it's hard work. It's grinding. And it's staying focused, bro. I'm telling you, that's what it is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's very, very that was very motivational because we can both. I know you're probably feeling the same way I'm feeling inside, just excited because that 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 is the process that everybody, you know, that's successful is going to go through at some point, straight rock bottom, and just you know, you have to just rely on, you know, whatever you had in your life, and you just you know, just making it happen, man. And um. You know, I can attest, man. I'm I'm just overwhelmed, man. That that was dope right there, Kyle. So I, I said you know, I could definitely let me, trick, let me say this really quick, and yeah. I know it's gonna sound crazy, but this works, bro. I used to take the little twenty-five and thirty dollars and I would count it and I would count it out like it was ten thousand dollars. I would mm -hmm. take the dollar bill and make it a one hundred dollar bill. 
I would imagine that I had $10,000 in my pocket. I would take pictures of money and put it on the wall. I would do this every single day, bro. I would eat, sleep, drink money because that's what I wanted. I kept my rationale. I didn't sell out. I didn't hurt anyone. I didn't want to do that. But I had to have a, a just an unbelievable drive. And I surrounded myself with people that were either as crazy as me <laughs> or could take me somewhere that I couldn't go. Yeah. Indeed, it was funny because I was having a conversation with one of my guys that I, I with one of my, my trainer actually yeah. went to one of his seminars this weekend and I ain't seen him in a while. And he was like, man, I miss you, man. What you been up to? And I said, bro, I've been digging. I got I had my shovel. I was at the bottom. I had to dig my way out. <laughs> yeah, and you right. finally seeing me. I'm at the light of day. So it, welcome. I'm back. What's going on? But OK, so we find our way out. You, you have Aboriginal Consulting. You are extremely knowledgeable. And I remember some of the, the earlier conversations we had. I said, man, this dude has a bevy of knowledge and I want to be knowledgeable the way he is. I want to be able to carry conversation because everything that we're talking about right now, very practical knowledge, but knowledge that we, as far as black men in particular, don't often find ourselves with the skill set of having. And it keeps us out of a lot of conversations that could yes. propel us into different tax brackets so to speak so how did you gain knowledge in the lingo how did you gain knowledge in just understanding what this word means and what this as opposed to this means did you was it a book that you read was it certain things in particular that you kind of leaned on how did you gain this bevy of knowledge um for me now this is what worked for me i joined a masonic organization when i got involved in masonry the light went on and the biggest commodity but for us as people is communications. Your ability to get your point across. If nobody understands you, nobody can help you. That's, that's just a fact. Your thoughts become things. So the things that you create are, by, are byproducts. Your actions are byproducts of your thoughts and emotions. And I promise you, I had to change my attitude and I had to, to refine how I communicate and get my point across. Because when I need help or when I need things to manifest, I gotta be able to communicate them. So I learned and understood knowledge and logic. I understood that I had to be knowledgeable of any and all information. I can't be biased, okay? You can't be biased when you get, when you attain an information. Let's say you're trying to be a YouTube star. I don't care if it's somebody you don't like, I don't care what it is, get everything you possibly can about it and then analyze it and vet it and process it because you want to be able to reason with yourself. Is this reasonable to me or isn't it not? Do I want to deal with it or don't I? And then the rhetoric that you produce, whether it's spoken or written, will be valid because we all use rhetoric. We're using rhetoric right now. You know, it's a means of money. It's verbal money. It's social exchange. Look at what's going on in 2019, going into 2020. Social exchange is, is bar none. You got Facebook, you got Twitter, you got Instagram. Mm. So sociability is money now. It's commerce. You know, you got click and order businesses instead of brick and, brick and mortar businesses. You know, buildings don't, you know, buying a building for a business is not necessarily a primary goal, but having a website is. And if you can't communicate that to the masses, you're not going to have that success that you're looking for. So communication is the key, man. You, when you're sitting in front of someone that may want to invest in you, you got to let them know that you're confident and knowledgeable. So be open minded to any and all knowledge, whether you agree with it or not. Put your personal feelings to the side and analyze that data and then vet it. Be logical, be logistical. And then before you come to any conclusion make sure that your logic is right and exact it's so important man learning how to learn and not what to learn is important it's all about learning how to learn man. absolutely yeah man you um definitely give given a lot you know um a great knowledge you know what i mean here um tonight i, I just want to um just shift a little bit you know um to hip-hop <clears throat> and talk about you know, sometimes we see a lot of people um, in a lot of different tax trouble. You know, um, could you give people advice once again for the new audience that's going to see this? You know, um, let's just say um, aspiring musicians or rappers, producers, anybody in the hip hop genre 
what type of advice would you give them, you know, coming in, if they're making money, whether it be um, through their music, you know, they're turning uh, um, DJ in YouTube, what type of advice would you give them right off the bat, starting off when they're starting to um, make money? Understand it's a business. Right off the bat, it's a business. And you have a product. And that product is the is, is music. So understand from the very beginning, it's a business, operate as a business person. Make business decisions, not emotional decisions like, oh man, I got to take this gig because I'm performing in front of Jay-Z and he might sign me. No, Jay-Z is your competitor at this point. You want to know how you can undercut Jay-Z. What can I do to get somebody when they walk in the store or when they download a song to download mine before Jay-Z? So when you used to be a fan, get that out the door. You got to end all of that. You got to control your emotions and you got to maintain proper thought because now your actions need to be indicative of such. So you got to have a business thought process and you got to maintain an, an emotional business-like act, you know, um, character so that your actions are indicative to business. So you start making sound business decisions that are long-term, not short-term come-ups. There is no one hit wonder in the music business. That's what is being marketed. But these people, these people that have these one hit songs, they work their asses off. It takes years of breaking in to really hit that one niche. And once you hit it, you ride it until the sun sets. <laughs> but it's very difficult to get into a saturated market. The music business, you have a better shot at the NBA than the music business. That's how saturated it is. So you get every, everything that you do has to be calculated. And it has to be about business. And that's the first step I would take, oh God, if I was going into the music business in 2019. Word. All right. So I'm the artist. I'm saying, man, the artist. I want to jump into the music industry. I hear from Com Suit that I need to start a business. I need to turn myself into a business. Mm -hmm. How do I do that? Life insurance, retirement insurance, like a SERP or a 401B, setting up your LLC or your escort. Before you worry about writing whatever song you write, get that out the way. Make sure you have an accountant and an attorney before you do anything. That's what I would, if someone was sitting down with me and saying, I want to be a music artist, we got to tackle that. We got to, that bucket list needs to be accomplished before you do anything else, before you engage in any music. When you're ready to actually record ASCAP or BMI, Set up a publishing house. Make sure that publishing house is annexed as a subsidiary to your holding company. Make sure your holding company has a DBA. Make sure your funds are not in your name. So you want to protect assets. These are things that need to be discussed before you become a star. I know it's very seductive and the lifestyle is very plush, but you need your business in place first and your artistry second. Because the industry is going to rape your artistry. They're going to exploit you. If you look at a 360 contract, it says it for the means of exploitation. And if you don't have a certain carve outs in a 360, you're just an employee. So you don't want to step in or, or, or even deal with a label or any managers or anything like that with your handout. One of, one of the biggest problems is artists get these fly by night managers. That want to take 15% of $300. Because you on the stage, you get a quick 300 You ain't got nothing to manage. What do I need a manager for? And in 2019, you can do it yourself. So you want to be in a position to pay people and be a boss in the door. You paying the money, you the boss, you hire and fire. You've already got your staff in place when you start. Right. How easy is it for an artist? Because we know a lot of people they'll go to what's comfortable to them. So if they know music, they know music, that's what's going to make them win. And they'll kind of leave the business side out of it because the language you're speaking may be kind of tough for them to understand. So help mm -hmm. the people out in knowing how easy it is to go and start an LLC or an S Corp and then go to the bank and begin starting a DBA and the things that you were, the steps that you were displaying. How easy is that to do for an artist? How easy is that to do in general for anybody? Three clicks of a mouse. Three clicks on the mouse pad. You go to irs.gov, you can get a free, you can get free unlimited EIN numbers for the rest of your life. 
You get an EIN number. You can go to companies like LegalZoom that will fill the legal paperwork out for you. If you want to use blank paperwork and fill out your own paperwork, you can go to LawDepot.com and you can fill out that paperwork. And then you want to register it with the state that you're in. The state that you're going to be doing business in as a company, you want to register your, your business. If you have an LLC, you want to register your organization. And then once you set up your organization, you set up your shares, and you distribute your shares to your organization. It is extremely simple. It's just having a roadmap, being able to know how to do it. But it's literally, you can set that up in an hour, and it's done. You don't have to think about it anymore. Just maintain it. <clears throat> definitely, definitely, brother. So, yeah, man, um, definitely, you know, a great, you know, uh, conversation, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, with Kansu tonight. We definitely want to continue, you know, if you can make time in your schedule in the future to uh, bring you on and just deal with different, you know, topics around business, finance, and hip-hop and everything, man. We want to make this, you know, make you a staple, you know, um, on the show. You know what I mean? At least maybe once a week. I was thinking at least weeks. once a week, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. At least once it's a week. It's all good, man. You know, I, I support hip-hop uncensored and viral hip hop you know i got so much respect for you guys i learn a lot from you guys every day man you guys stand up guys man, we've, been trying to, we've been trying to pay you for some consultation forever oh, man people. don't even don't trip bro we're having a conversation we're like man like we got to give we just want to pay this dude he won't take the money though the money, <laughs> man. Yeah, man. i learned man oh. i learned you know cats that is on your level that that appears you know you create a brotherhood man we'll get money together but we don't right. take money you know right. what I'm saying? I, I, I think that formula works. That's why I like cats like, you know, Dame and Jay and Meek and, and, and Rick Ross. People around, those people around, those people actually flourish in their circle. They don't have a bunch of leeches around them. They go and get money. They show their friends how to get money. They don't take money from each other. Because if you guys are successful, these are my successful friends. Why would I want I don't want you. You're a man. A man shouldn't be empowered by another man. That's not manhood to me, man. Mm -hmm. A man shouldn't be going to another man with his hands out. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? A man should be to, to pick another man up. Like, mm -hmm. come on, my nigga, man up. Get the shit in order, yo. I got this cake, man. Let's eat. Let's get the chicken. Let's do it. And then, then you know, because obviously you, you protect another man's manhood. A manhood means a lot to us, man. A lot of people don't understand, especially being black men, our manhood cannot be compromised. We'll walk away from an opportunity if it compromises our manhood. Mm -hmm. Manhood is what gives us motivation and drive. That's what we try to even explain to our women. If you don't fortify me as a man, I'm not motivated no more. It's not about that. And that's what really, really motivates me in business is I could be a man about my shit, bro. When I wake up every morning, I know I'm manning up on my shit. It feels good when, I, when I'm a provider, yo. When I when I when I feed people, when I help people with their light bills and help them pay rent, I'm like, mm -hmm. man, I'm bossing up, man. I'm manning up for I'm, I'm representing my family. You know what I'm saying? Well, mm -hmm. I'm sitting at the table with other bosses. It makes life easier because we just make decisions and we go, we out. You know, we ain't gotta do all that frivolous talking, man. We <laughs> doing this, okay, bye, man. I'll let you later. You know what I mean? <laughs> it works, man. So I don't look at it like that. I see that we all working together, man, to make life easier, man. So it's all good. Indeed, absolutely. Okay. I mean, you, I wanted to ask you real quick before you got off about Dame, because you brought up Dame, and that kind of raised our both of uh, Oga and I's eyebrows. We're gonna talk about Dame a little bit on the segment, <laughs> yeah. and we all know just the the month or two that Dame has had. Um, you still say you have a lot of respect for him. And I think Oga yeah. and I will attest we have respect for him, but has it changed at all? What are your th What are your thoughts now on Dame? Uh, that he, you know, he he is learning a valuable lesson. He isolated himself to a point where he's in an environment that he got to flourish as a business person and that situation between him and kenyatta dame is wrong and he didn't have a choice though because he put himself he compromised his leverage you know he he was going into the media business or did you got to know your terrain mm -hmm. you know you read books like 49 laws of power machiavelli all the war you know he should have went back and took some lessons because if you know lyle cohen it's gonna have a major role at YouTube. You can't cut yourself off of your multimedia outlet. You're trying to make Dusko Poppington, you're trying to do the radio, the TV show, and then you then it then the light bulb goes off. Oops, I'm gonna be streaming. Oops, Google is boss. Mm -hmm. Oh man, guess who I gotta talk to? Lara Cohen. Yeah. And of course, you know, Lara Cohen 
is going to say, what's up, bro? I got the key. What you want to do? So now Dame is in a tough position because he got all that weight on his shoulders. He got people he got to feed. So <clears throat> hopefully Dame learned from it. I respect Dame because he worked. He made something out of nothing. I always got to respect that because I shared a struggle because I know what it's like to have zero. You understand what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. Dame gets my respect for that. But Dame, come on, man. We samurais, man. We got a code, bro. <laughs> you yeah. to keep your heart as clean as you keep your soul. You got to be on point with that. That's just something we don't cross. And I think he crossed the line as a man. He owes Kenyatta a problem. So I, I lost, you know, dang, you know, Dame is like a, a head shake. Like, dang, man, you know, I'm rooting for you, you know? So, mm -hmm. you know, I think my feelings mutual where y'all coming from, but I do respect the brother, you know what I'm saying? Fact. Yeah, yeah, I think that's, um, you know, our sentiment, you know, exactly. It was definitely disappointing. But, again, you know, Google, YouTube is right there, one and two. So you got to, you know, know how to play in the terrain. You can't isolate yourself. from. That's yeah. a cash cow. Those are two cash cows right there. Well, why take those away when you need you need those if you're doing media? You need those two. You need to be um, relevant in those two categories. And we're gonna have Kenyatta Griggs on the podcast hopefully within the next day or so. Yeah, Thursday or Friday, so we'll be able to ask him directly what he was his thoughts on on it and everything. We're it's gonna be a hell hey, of man. a minute. Looking forward to it. When you do, just let him know. I got so much respect for him. I want to keep fighting. Indeed. Don't stop, man. He right there. He right there. Yeah. We definitely will. Mm -hmm. Definitely, but we appreciate your time, brother. We know you got business to take care of and whatnot, bro. Yes, so, sir, um, sir. you know, we'll definitely be in, you know, in contact with you, bro. Appreciate you, brother. Oh, yeah, most definitely, man. Anytime. All right, have a blessed night, bro. Peace, y'all. All right, right. Hey, sir. Definitely, babe. Another episode's in the books, man. We are out of here. Stay tuned for the Wake and Bake podcast Let coming real soon. Talk about ice cream. Look out for that. Yeah, man. And, you know, with that being said, man, we out of here. I keep your head on the swivel. Everybody have a beautiful, beautiful night. We'll be back, man. Peace. Peace. Hopping out the legs, I felt like Malcolm X. Marching with the shooters like Martin Luther. 40 cal SK or the fucking Ruger. Don't ever question if I got the heart to shoot. We, we must make the plans that we shall always march ahead. We cannot turn back. They say the best things come from the worst shit. This all facts, this ain't no verse shit. I done fought the state on some verse.